In this presentation, we will take a look at a situation where a partner leaves the partnership and receives cash less than the amount in the capital account. Here's the trial balance we will be using. We have the assets in green, the liabilities in orange, and then the equity accounts. We have note, no revenue and expenses, in essence this being a post-closing trial balance. And therefore, we can just say that we have the assets minus the liabilities equaling the equity reflected by the capital accounts. Here we're going to have a partner leaving. So M is going to be the partner leaving and we're going to receive M is going to receive cash less than the amount in the partnership uh, capital account. Why might this be you may ask? Well it, it could be that we have to revalue. It's really kind of a negotiation process for the partner leaving uh, even though there's money in the capital account. So it could very well be for example that the capital account or the equity section doesn't represent the fair market value of the partnership. For example, equipment or something may be on the books and have a higher value than we think it could actually be sold for and therefore the value of the capital account may not reflect assets minus liabilities on uh, the partnership but may be different due to uh, things being on the, on, the, on the balance sheet at cost rather than at fair market value. There also could be things like goodwill or something like that that may not be there and there also may be considerations such as the fact that uh, M is le leaving suddenly and in order to do that may be uh, going to receive less on the on the leaving due to that factor. So our journal entry then is going to be first we're going to say that cash is received. Now the cash we're going to say um, I mean the cash is paid. <laughs> so the ca cash is going to be paid for 100,000 to M although M has a 151 200 capital account. So cash is going to go down, cash has 550 in it, it's going to go down by that 100,000. Then we're going to say that M's capital account is going to go down by the 151. These are the two things we know that have to happen. So M's capital account goes down by the 151 because that's what it's on the books for and M's leaving, therefore it has to be back down to zero. And then uh, cash is going to go down by the 100,000. So there's a difference then, of course, of the 51,200. What are we going to do with that? Well, it's not going to be revenue or expense. It's not going to be on the income statement. In essence, the other two partners are going to have to deal with that. So B then is going to have a capital increase of the 14,629 and L is going to have a capital account increase of 36,571. Note, of course, the breakout here is not an even breakout because we're saying that the original profit sharing, and this is going to be a bit tricky, was 3, 2, 5. That's going to be our profit sharing between M, B, and L. And so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that adds up to 10. So, for example, then the uh, L had, prior to M leaving, uh, 5 over 10 or 50% interest or profit sharing within the partnership. The problem is that if M leaves, then we can't use this same ratio because it's not going to add up to 100%. We have to allocate that uh, that loss or that gain, it should be, up to 51,200 to the other partners. We're going to increase their capital account by that amount. But we're only left with uh, these two left over. So we can re say we can recalculate this as 2 5. Those are the only two partner percentage is left over which is going to add up to 7. So that means that we have uh, 2 over 7 and 5 over 7 for our partnership percentages. So if we were then to take the 51 which is the the uh, 121,200 minus the 100 we can then say, well, let's do the math on the whole thing. It's going to say 121, 200, uh, 151, 151, 200 minus 100,000 means we have the 51, 200 that we have to allocate to B and L. We will do so by two sevenths to B. So I can say times two divided by seven. And that's how much we're going to allocate to B. We've rounded it here, of course. And we can do the same thing for uh, L. We can say that same 151,200 minus the 100,000 gives us the 51,200 times 5, this 5 here, 
divided by 7. And that'll give us the 36, uh, 571. And that'll be the proper allocation then. So that'll be an allocation that works. It adds up to 100. That's what we need in order for the 100,000 credit. This 100,000 plus the 36, 571 plus the 14, 629 to equal the 151, 200. So if we post this out then, we've got cash uh, was at 151 or 550,000 minus 100,000 to 450,000. We've got M's capital account. Here's M's capital at 151, 200. We took it all the way down to zero because M is leaving. And then the other two are getting kind of a bonus. They're getting a gain because really they, the M sold the capital account pretty much left for less than the actual earnings in the capital account, which will increase B and L's capital. So we had the 124,200 going up by the 14,629 to a capital balance of 138,829. And then we've got L's capital starting at 264,600 going up by 36,571 in the credit direction to 301,171. So here's our end result. We have M is gone. Cash goes down by the 100,000. We're still in balance because we allocated that difference to B and L. Note no effect on the income statement, no effect on revenue and expenses. Although it's kind of like, you know, this is kind of like it's a gain to B and L because they basically uh, got an increase in their capital accounts. They, they're gonna, it shows here that they're, they're owed kind of more money by the partnership due to selling or buying out the partner here for less than the amount in the capital account. But that's not the same as the partnership earning revenue by generating revenue from normal sales and normal operations. So rather than putting this down on, on the income statement and then closing it out to B&L's capital account, we would typically uh, not record it on the income statement because it's not showing performance of partnership activities, it's showing the buying and selling of partnership equity, partnership interest.